Hello, my name is Boneless and welcome to part 1 of my Tinker Jungling Guide. First I'll show you how to get Boots to travel in 7 minutes on top of Quilling Blade and Bottle, and then I'll show you how to get an even faster Boots of travels in less than 6 minutes where you borrow a bottle from a teammate. Tinker Jungling has been attempted before, but it's never been done using this high ground jungle technique, so it's never really been fast enough. But maybe now Tinker Jungling will actually be viable, as I'm about to show you how to get Boots of Travel so fast that you can actually justify running Tinker as a greedy jungler. I'm really excited to show you what I've come up with, let's get into it. You want to start off by stacking the two medium camps at the same time, so here you see I hold my attack for just a moment because I want to pull the rune camp at 43, because then when they run back to their camp I can pull them again from all the way up here. So pull the rune camp at 53 and the other medium camp at 55. And then after the camps have been stacked, pull the rune camp again so you're sure the march will hit them for maximum damage. Cast your march of the machines at 105 while you're standing right here, so this way the march will hit both medium camps. Remember to place the march in this direction so it's hitting the creeps from the side because this way the march will do a lot more damage. Now I'm right clicking the creeps with got the highest amount of HP left, because this way I'm setting up the rune camp in such a way so everything will die when I throw down the second march which I will do here at 140. So now I'm gonna pull the rune camp and do a second march at exactly the same spot as I did before. If the rune camp is cleared, you can now go stack the hard camp plus the medium camp. The projectiles should hit the hard camp at 53 and the other medium camp at 55. And try as best you can not to get hit by the trolls or the ranged satyrs. If the trolls or the ranged satyr get too many hits on you, they will run back to their camp early, which means you might fail the stack. And then you should return to right click the new rune camp from this high ground area up here. And from now on you want to stack the hard camp plus medium camp every minute and in between that farm the rune camp again and again. This is the fastest way you can jungle with these type of heroes that rely on stacking. When you're certain you don't face ranged status in the rune camp, you can use your clarity. And of course, be careful not to get your clarity cancelled. At around the 3 minute mark, you should have the bottle ready, which is convenient because now you can use the flying courier to bottle crew. If you do want to get the super fast boots of travels, you will need to bottle crew a few times. This might be inconvenient if your mid lane also needs to bottle crew. Alternatively, you can bring out a few more clarities with your bottle, but it will delay your boots of travel timing a bit. The other option is soul ring, but I wouldn't do that, because trading away your life for mana makes you an easy victim in case you get ganked. If they gank you, it's much better to have full HP and 3 bottle charges than it is to have 40% HP and a soul ring. What you could do is put a hero on the mid lane who doesn't need to bottle crow constantly. So like for example, if you have viper or invoker for mid lane, then you can bottle crow a lot more. When you have a little break like I have here, you can use it to right click potential golems in the other medium camp. And also right about now you should think about cutting down these trees here. The two trees up here should be cut down so you are more likely to successfully pull off the 6 and the 7 minute stack on the hot camp. And these trees here should be cut down so you can still do the double stacking by going north after all the other trees have respawned. I skill master the machines on level 1, 3 and 5 and the other two skill points I hold for later. Holding on to these two skill points is important because depending on the situation you might need laser or you might need heat seeking missiles. It depends. In some cases you might want to put a fourth level into march if that last bit of damage will help you to get the boots of travel completed. But mostly you want to leave your march on level 3 so you can get your level 4 heat seeking missiles up around the same time as you complete your travels, preferably by level 8. And from here you can max laser and pick up more levels in rearm as you get mana to support it. In rare cases, when I know I just cannot get anywhere close to the enemy team without dying, I might skill stats instead of laser or leave laser at level 1. I only might do this if my plan is to rush a Hex or a Dagon. The extra point in stats gives me more mana which allows me to get my heat seeking missile Dagon combo off more times because the range of heat seeking missile, Hex and a high level Dagon is a lot better than the range of laser, not to mention that laser got a long cast animation. So building Tinker this way allow you to do a lot more damage from a distance which might be the way to go when you just can't stay alive in the fights. Now I'll stack the two camps one more time and then I'm gonna clear it with my level 3 march and rearm. If possible, try to have a lot of mana at this point, because with full mana and some bottle charges you can march, rear, march, rear, march, which clears everything. If you don't have mana for everything, you can just wait for your march to cool down and then you can clear everything. And notice that I'm placing the march in such a way that I'm also killing the medium camp stack. At this point, I've sent the Quilling Blade back with the Courier and sold it. And now, in less than 7 minutes, I'm level 8 and I'm only 100 gold short of my travels. Those of you who play a lot of Tinker on the mid lane know that the average boots of travel timing on top of bottle soul ring is around 11 minutes if you're having a decent good game. If you get ganked a lot it might be 13-14 minutes and if you're having a really good time on the mid lane it might be 9 minutes. 
The boost of travel timing is really important because Tinker's weakest point of the game is just before he completes his travels. You're always really scared around the 10 minute mark when the landing stage breaks up and the enemy wants to gank you because they want to delay your booster travels. So I thought it would be really interesting to theory craft and find the fastest way possible Tinker can complete his booster travel. Because the thing is, it's a lot easier to farm everything else once you have the travels. So what if you as a pocket strat have a hero lend Tinker a bottle so he can finish his booster travel around the 6 minute mark before the laning stage is even over? Lending a bottle is really strange, yeah I know. This is just me thinking outside the box, trying to theorycraft some options. I mean in TI5, Poppy bought 3 bottles on his gen and gave them to his teammates on secret. It's not always a bad thing to think outside the box. I'm not saying this is something you should do every time you jungle a Tinker. In fact, I think you should only do this if your game plan is to get boosts of travel on Tinker as fast as humanly possible because either you're really scared of Tinker loses his jungle before he completes it, or you want the boosts of travel on Tinker as fast as possible because this allows you to immediately put immense pressure on the enemy lanes with Tinker who is constantly ganging and just spamming level 4 heat taking missiles on the enemy to disrupt their farming. And keep in mind that a couple of high level rockets 6 minutes into the game pretty much kills a hero. It does so much damage. Damage. So if you're not killing them, you're forcing them away from the lane. So for example, the enemy team's safe lane hard carry, who is not at all done farming at this point. He just can't stay on the safe lane anymore because of the constant rocket spamming. So if this end up being the case, your team got a huge advantage and it would have proven to be a good investment to lend Tinker a bottle. And I do mean lend by the way, because as soon as Tinker got his boost of travels ready, he should farm his own bottle of soul ring and give the bottle back to the guy he borrowed it from. If you run into golems and you have your level 2 match ready, then it's actually possible to kill the golems in time to stack the hard camp and the medium camp the minute after. But this is gonna take some practice, because every single right click counts. If you get golems in the very first room camp at the 30 second mark, it's actually also fine, because you got an extra 30 seconds to right click them. But if you get mod golems at the 1 minute mark or the 2 minute mark here in the room camp, then you won't have time to kill them, because you don't have your level 3 march yet. If this is the case, you simply stack the two medium camps at the same time again, like you saw it did in the beginning by pulling at 43 and then 53, and then the next minute you'll have time to deal with it because golems can't spawn there two times in a row. It will not slow down your immediate jungle speed at all by doing it this way. The only consequence will be that you stack the two medium camps instead of the medium camp plus hard camp, which in the end will mean you have one less stack in the hard camp. I hope that made sense. Bottom line, no matter what creeps you get, it is possible to reach your level 7 at 6 minutes if you don't make a mistake and if you don't get interrupted. In this game I forgot to cut down these trees over here, so here at the 5 minute stack I failed the hard camp stack. I'd mean sometimes it'll stack, sometimes it won't, but cutting down these trees over here really improves your chances. This time I'm choosing to right click the last few creeps here in the medium camp in order to get my level 6, so that I can clear the rest of the hard camp with the march rearm. You can do other weird things to speed up your jungling by the way. You could put a clockwork on the offlane who just keeps spamming rockets onto the medium camp to make your level faster. And it kind of fits right, because by the time clockwork gets his level 6 and wants to start ganking, Tinker will have the travels ready and can take over the defense of the offlane tier 1 tower. So travels and level 7 in less than 6 minutes, I give you my biggest pop stumbling strat. And this can be done even faster, I mean this time I did miss a stack, I did mess up with the curry a little bit, and who knows, maybe if you get all the bounty runes and put the 2 spare points in stats and play absolutely flawlessly, then maybe you can get your travels in less than 5 minutes. If you want to, you can actually stack all 3 camps at the same time by using March of the Machines. This is something I call delayed stacking, which is something I'm not gonna go into today. However, when I tested it, I found that it's actually not even worth it to stack 3 camps at the same time with Tinker. You want to use your march to kill creeps, not stack camps. You'll have plenty of stacks to work with, as it is. As you may have noticed, I'm getting the boots before the bottle, and the reason I do this is that I want to make sure that I can pull off the double stacks, because the thing is, Keeper of the Light is the perfect hero to pull off the double stacks. He got good movement speed, nice animation, and a long attack range. Tinker also got nice movement speed, nice animations, but his attack range is a bit short. So to compensate, I need the early boots to make sure I won't fail the double stacks. Besides, you don't really need the early mana anyway. It takes a few minutes actually to run out of mana when you're farming with March. And of course, it's easier to escape early ganks with boots of speed. All Tinkers should have a soul ring. The value you get from this item is so damn insane. But when I jungle Tinker, I prefer to go Quilling Blade into boots, into bottle, into boots of travels. Like I said, I tried with the soul ring, it works fine, but your HP is just too low in case you get ganked. The moment you get boots of travels, you want to start ganking. And you don't even need a soul ring to do this to be honest. 9 out of 10 times early ganking on Tinker is all about getting your level 4 heat taking missiles and then join up with your team and then throw down rocket re rocket and then TP back to base. 
You will have enough mana to do this, even without Soul Ring. After I get my boost of travels, I get a Soul Ring and then a Blink Dagger, and this is my standard opening on a Tinker. I do this every game. After the nerf to the Ethereal Blade, the max Dagger on Ethereal Blade has gone out of fashion. It's still strong, but nowadays most Tinkers, including myself, prefer the old school Bloodstone into Dagon or Hex buildup. But it all depends, right? Sometimes you want the Bloodstone first, sometimes you want the Dagon first, and sometimes you want to pick up an early Ghost Scepter to protect yourself from heavy physical damage. If you're lazy and don't like to shift key your late game Blink Hex Ethereal Blade Dagon, then stuff like Bloodstone Hex Shiva's Manta is a really strong late game build. It allows you to have a more aggressive positioning because you're tanky and Tinker can actually do a surprising amount of right click damage with this build. These are just the best Tinker items, and which way you put them together entirely depends on the game. Once in a while I go for a late game BKB. I know some Tinkers would never do this, but in some cases I just find it really useful. And no, you cannot re your BKB. If my team is behind and I'm defending high ground, I might go for Scepter. In super late game I might have Scepter as a 7th item for when they are pushing, which I will then switch around with like Amanta for example, when my team is pushing. Like I said before, it's important to save your skill points until you know what you're gonna need. In most situations you would want to have the high level heat seeking missiles as soon as possible, but in some situations the laser can also be really important because of the mischance. So here for example I realize that I can help Lina to get a kill in the mid lane, so I level up my heat seeking missile right away and launch it. This is why I think Tinker is better in the jungle than he is on the mid lane. Early on he can participate in ganks on top lane and mid lane with a long range rocket, and you don't even have to fully commit nor lose any of your jungle speed. Just communicate with your team and be in position to throw down a long range rocket at exactly the right time. If you hold your mouse over the rocket skill you can see exactly how long the range of the rocket is. I use this a lot when I play Tinker. Here is an example where I level up the laser as I see an opportunity to kill the twin headed dragon who just ganked the shadow fiend on mid lane. I know the laser animation is shorter than the ice path animation so I'm baiting him to the point where he thinks he can kill me with double damage rune. So you see, if I had just put all my levels in March and heat seeking missiles, this kill would not have been possible. Tinker Jungle is in my opinion great in pub games. On average, I get my boots of travels between 8 and 10 minutes, and I mean without the free bottle shenanigans. Once in a while I get it faster than 8 minutes, and once in a while I get it later than 10 minutes, primarily if I'm against something annoying like a roaming potch who just keeps stalking me and my team deem it wisest that I deal with him alone without getting any help, or if I'm against a bounty hunter. Bounty hunter is the one hero you just don't wanna face. Tinker jungling can work in team games if you pick him in the right draft. If it was me drafting a captain's mode game, I would approach it like this. Does Tinker fit our draft? Are there any counters to Tinker? Storm, nukes, heroes with flying vision, catch potential can be quite annoying. And if we put Tinker in the jungle, can we trick the opponent into a bad mid matchup? And most importantly, can we handle the enemy support duo early game? Will their team be able to gain supremacy of our jungle within the first 10 minutes of the game before Tinker gets his boost of travel online, or will we be able to fight them off? Do we have any push, anti-push? Tinker is pretty much the best hero in the game in terms of anti-pushing and defending high ground. Finally of course, you need to realize that Tinker takes a lot of farm on the map. It's very unusual to have a jungler who soaks up a big portion of the map come mid to late game, so be very careful not to pick up too many farming heroes. Tinker got a lot of potential in the pocket strat department. There are so many funny pocket strats you can do with the Tinker, so having the option of putting him in the jungle can prove quite useful. What are the pros and cons of jungling a Tinker? Allow me here to compare Tinker jungle to Tinker mid lane to paint you guys a picture. Putting Tinker in the jungle is of course a big surprise factor. My channel hasn't had a lot of exposure as of yet, so doing this high ground jungle technique and getting the super fast travels in the jungle will catch a lot of people by surprise. The thing is, on the mid lane you probably want a null talisman for last hitting, a stick is usually a good idea, and you want the bottle, maybe a soul ring, and then you get your boots of travels. In the jungle you just need quilling blade bottle crow and that's it. And if you put Tinker in the jungle you can get a bunch of levels on the hero you would have otherwise thought of as the position 4 support hero. Or even better, you can put a hero on the mid lane who is a lot better at ganking than Tinker is. Because, let's face it, Tinker on mid lane is not the best ganker. You can only really roam with the TP scroll. Yes, you might see a Tinker occasionally picking up a haste rune and getting a double kill somewhere, but more often than that it's just too dangerous to go for runes with a Tinker. At least you will need your supports to help you secure the rune. I would say that a jungle Tinker is actually better at participating in ganks because that long range rocket out of nowhere is unexpected. The reason you pick up Tinker really is because you want to place him in the mid lane or in the safe lane where his sole purpose is to dominate the lane and last hit creeps so he can get his booster travels online as soon as possible. So since the point is to just AFK farm with Tinker until you get the boots of travels, then why not put him in the jungle? 
However, Tinker is a great lane controller and does well in a lot of mid matchups, which you will of course miss out on if you put him in the jungle. But then again, to be a good lane dominator you'll need two levels in laser. In the jungle you won't have to put anything in laser, and I think it's really important to get that max level heat seeking missiles up and running as soon as possible. So in the moment you get your travels you can make that surprise gank on the enemy core hero with level 4 rocket rearm rocket, just like you saw I did before against the phantom assassin. The first thing you learn about Dota is that if the enemy team got a tinker and that tinker is free farming then you're gonna have a bad time. The most vulnerable time for tinker is just before it gets a boost of travels and good players know this and they will try to gank you. This is why you need to get the boost of travel as fast as humanly possible. If you die right after you complete the travels, you don't really care, but if you die right before you get your travels, you're really sad. So the big downside about Tinker is if your team is behind early, you are in danger. Yes, you can say this about all junglers, you can say this about Tinker on mid lane. If you get constantly ganked on the mid lane, you're also screwed. But what I mean is like, if the enemy team puts serious effort into shutting you down in the jungle and your team is falling behind so they can't really help you to contest the jungle, then it can be really hard to get that last 500 gold you need and then it might be better to just last hit creeps under the tower to complete the travels. So this is the big risk you take by jungling Tinker. You might end up slowing your team down a little bit if your team is really far behind and you might end up rotating one of your other cores because you need the safe farm to complete the travels. The good news is you are somewhat able to defend yourself from ganks, you got the extra skill points saved up in case you need to pick up laser. With early boost on tinker you are actually faster than most heroes at this point of the game. You are always at max HP and you might even have a bottle charge to boot. And finally if you do manage to juke in the trees the turnaround potential is great because March of the Machines does a huge amount of damage in the early game. So compared with Coddle or Necrophos it is a little bit harder to gank the tinker. That being said, you don't have an escape mechanism, you don't have summons, so if the enemy team smoke ganks you, then you are in trouble. Tinker offers pretty much the same, no matter if you jungle him or if you put him mid. So ultimately, what it all comes down to is this. Do you need a second support hero? A position 4 hero that can get some smoke ganks going and can help out the lanes in the early game? If this is the case, you put your Tinker in the mid lane. But if you feel like you can last pick a strong mid laner who is a hell of a lot better at ganking than Tinker is and can help you to get through the early game this way, then you can put the Tinker in the jungle and get huge value and a lot of levels on all your heroes. Tinker is not much of a ganker in the mid lane, but if you jungle him this way he can be a really fast jungle farmer. So if the draft allows it, I would put Tinker in the jungle definitely. And by all means, you don't have to give him a bottle, it's just an idea. This high ground jungle technique is really difficult to use to its fullest potential, so you will need lobby game practice before you try this out. Your pop team is only gonna like you if you know what you're doing and you can get the travels fast in like less than 10 to 11 minutes. On a scale from 1 to 10, where 1 being the easiest and 10 being the hardest to execute jungling, I would give this a 7 just like the coddle. It's very difficult to pull off, so this does require lobby game practice before you do it in a real game. Will Tinker ever see play in a pro game? If the right people watch this video and decide to give it a try in a pro game and have success with it, then who knows, maybe this could be the thing that brings back Tinker into the meta occasionally. That would be awesome, but I think the much more realistic scenario is that it's probably not gonna happen. I think Tinker jungling is still too weird of a notion for the pros to do this consistently in pro games, and there is this risk involved that if you lose your jungle completely early game then you might have to occupy one of the other lanes and it might get a bit messy. But in the right draft, I believe Tinker jungling can work even on a pro level. In any case, it's a lot of fun to do in pop games. I've had a lot of success with this, and I'm sure you guys will too. Thanks for watching, subscribe by clicking here, find me on Facebook, Twitter, and see you soon for part 2, where I will show you how to jungle Tinker on the Radiant side. Take care guys.